this episode, we're going to go a little more in-depth with pronoun reference. It's a really big topic, so it does call for a second episode. Let's start out by recapping what we covered in the first episode. To start, a pronoun stands in the place of nouns. So a pronoun can be a word like it, they, he, she, etc. And when you have a pronoun, then there are three basic rules that apply. First of all, the pronoun must refer to a noun. So when you see a pronoun like it or they or he, go look for the noun in the sentence. Second, the pronoun must agree with the noun. So if you have a plural pronoun like they, make sure you're referring to a plural noun like the people or something like that. And third rule, it must be clear which noun a pronoun is referring to. So if you have a pronoun like she, it has to be clear whether you're referring to one woman in particular. It shouldn't be the case that you can't tell which of two women you're talking about. And these three rules come up uh, all throughout the writing section. And in addition to these rules that we're recapping, we have some new rules to cover right now. Those are, know these singular words, every, any, either, neither, one, and none. And with compound subjects that use or or nor, make the pronoun agree with the second subject. And lastly, don't interchange you with one. Let's look at those three new rules in some detail now. So the first rule here about pronouns is that there are certain words that may not seem singular, but they are. And those are every, any, either, neither, one, and none. And because they're singular, they need to be used with singular pronouns, like it or he, depending on context. You can't use them with plural pronouns because they're not plural words. This will make the most sense in the context of some examples, so let's see. First up, one of my relatives lost all their money in the stock market crash of 1929. So here we have the singular word one. And incidentally, we're not going to pay attention to of my relatives because it's a prepositional phrase. You may remember from the episodes on subject verb agreement that prepositional phrases we don't pay attention to. Anyway, one is singular, so we have to talk about a relative who lost all of his money if we know it's a guy, her money if we know it's a woman, or his or her if you don't know. But you could also incidentally say his because his can be used as a generic. Anyway, one is singular, his is singular, problem fixed. Now the next example is a little more confusing. Here we have another singular word, none. It's one of the words that I mentioned previously. And we have to say that none of my classmates, which we ignore because it's a prepositional phrase, finished their homework on time. Now, we all talk like this, but this is absolutely wrong. None is a singular word, and there is a plural pronoun. So believe it or not, we have to write a singular pronoun like his. None of my classmates finished his homework on time may sound completely bizarre, but I swear to you it's right. And on the SAT, that's what you're going to need to consider a right answer, not that. So strange though it may sound, it's right. Last example, each of the exotic creatures I saw had evolved unexpected methods for fending off their predators. Here, the singular word is each. Incidentally, we're going to ignore this because it's a prepositional phrase. And we get each had evolved these methods for fending off its predators. Just like each is singular, we need to use its, which is a singular. So that's the first rule. The second rule is how to use or or nor. When you have compound subjects that